Good evening, <clears throat> Honorable Mayor, Village Council, and residents of the beautiful Palmetto Bay. Thank you for the opportunity to stand here before you today to present the, the Department of the, of the Village Clerk. For those who are here this evening or watching from home, my name is Missy Arocha, and I am the proud Village Clerk for the Village of Palmetto Bay. I began my tenure with the Village of Palmetto Bay in 2012, and since then, I never looked back. As an overview of the clerk's presentation this evening, my goal is to showcase the department by explaining and showcasing what we do for the community and how we serve the elected officials, including the residents of this community. The presentation will also give you an overview of our operating budget, department goals, and funding requests for the new fiscal year budget 2024. The village of Palmetto Bay is a municipal government that operates as a council manager form of government. The mayor and council are elected by the stakeholders who are the citizens of the community. The mayor and council abide by the village charter by appointing three charter officers, the attorney, the manager and the clerk. The manager is fully responsible for the municipal administration of this village, including the budget, the reason we are here today. The other two charter officers have specific duties they have to abide by as outlined in the village charter. This leads me to, to your village clerk and I'm proud of it, and I'll never get tired of saying that. The department of the clerk is made up of three staff members. The clerk, who supervises two administrative assistants who are also certified passport agents. They're known as Melissa and Idaomi. For the new fiscal year budget, uh, we're proposing to add a record specialist. The record specialist ensures compliance with all public records, including handling all general inquiries and serving as a liaison between all village-wide departments and the office of the clerk regarding all village-wide records. As mentioned in my prior slide, the three charter officers appointed by the council report to the Honorable Mayor Karen Cunningham, Vice Mayor Leanne Tellum, Council Members Patrick Fiore, Steve Cody, and Council Member Matson. Again, thank you for your trust in allowing me to serve you as your village clerk. This slide in front of you is an, ex is an excerpt directly from the charter, specifically section 3-6 village clerk that outlines the duties and responsibilities of my charter position. Outside of the scope of the charter that was recently presented to you in the prior slide, the clerk has other duties and responsibilities related to public information and constituent services. Those responsibilities are all listed on this slide in front of you. I will not read them word by word but I will provide you other specific examples that describe what the clerk does for the community. When members of the public often interact with our office, they have meeting protocol questions, are considering a run for elected office, have questions regarding voter information, early voting opportunities, or even how to access a public record. Questions on how to connect with an elected official how to, how to participate in a meeting, or simply just how to become more involved in their local government. The office of the clerk represents you, hence my staff and I pride ourselves in providing valuable service to the stakeholders of this community. The office of the clerk also provides support services to the mayor, the village council, including various appointed advisory boards and committees. 
Our active committees and boards are the Art in Public Places Advisory Board, Education Advisory Committee, Parks and Recreation Committee, Resiliency Committee, Tree Advisory Board, Veterans Park Task Force, Youth, com <coughs> Youth Community Involvement Task Force, and of course, we can't forget the recently inaugurated Palmetto Bay Foundation where your village clerk serves as the secretary. The clerk wears many hats, but one of the most significant responsibilities of the position includes being the supervisor of elections for the village. As your supervisor of elections, I serve as a qualifying officer for all your municipal elections, and I serve as the liaison between the village and Miami-Dade County Elections Department. You haven't seen these numbers. I provided some election facts on this slide, and I saved them specifically for tonight's presentation. I like to consider, I like to consider them interesting facts, and I verified these numbers recently with Miami-Dade Elections Department. Based on the most recent election we held in November of 2022, the village of Palmetto Bay has 18,130 registered voters. And for that election, 11,526 voted. That, le that left us with a 63.6% .6 voter turnout. And if you, as, as from what you can see on that slide, the majority of those voters voted with a vote by mail ballot. So I wanted to share the, those numbers with you. I thought they were interesting to share as your supervisor of elections. Furthermore, in partnership with the U.S. Department of State, the Office of the Clerk also acts as a passport acceptance facility. The facility inaugurated in May of 2019, and due to the COVID pandemic, we were shut down for several months. But since we reopened Village Hall, we have been extremely busy with back-to-back -back appointments. The facility establishes a revenue source for the village through processing passport applications and provides photo services, all this while providing a benefit and a service to the constituents of your community. Since the beginning of this year's fiscal budget, through June 22nd to be specific, I pulled these numbers on uh, June of, uh, 22nd, the facility has processed over 1,400 applications. That's generating over $49,000 in revenue. That's not accounting the service for the, for the photos. Now when you um, add those together, the, app, the, the fees for the applications, the photos, and the copying, we've generated $63,000 approximately, and that's just up until June, and the fiscal year budget has not ended. So we, we plan and anticipate to, to go um, above that 63,000. I'm always very pleased to announce that the Passport Office is a customer-friendly location for the community that many of those who stop by or receive service, they consider us a boutique passport experience. So we pride ourselves on that. In terms of expenditures, as the village manager illustrated earlier during his presentation, the village clerk is only 2% of the general fund summary. That 2% amounts to approximately $380,000 from the, from the general fund. And to date, we are currently uh, operating under budget. Slide number 12, the slide in front of you, illustrates our trend over the years, our proposed and historical budget versus to actual. And again, we have been operating under budget. Based on the chart of accounts, the most significant expense in the clerk's department is legal advertising. Election costs are always our second expense category when 
um, it's an election fiscal year. Now, in order to be in line with the, with the mandates of the charter, the code of ordinance, specifically the Florida statutes, the clerk is required to give notices of all our public meetings. Vendors such as the Daily Business Review, the Miami Herald, and the community newspaper are the sources used to meet these mandatory legal advertising requirements. And hence, that brings me back to saying that if you can see from the chart of accounts, legal advertising is our largest expense. Accomplishments for our current fiscal year. First of all, if there's something that I learned working with this council, particularly the mayor, she's taught us that we can never say thank you enough. To that end, I want to thank our manager, including our IT division, both um, um, all three, Desmond, Eric, and Johan. They've been extremely helpful um, in assisting in accomplishing some of the goals that I laid out in my uh, brief during last year's budget. And um, with their help, we've been able to implement some new technology software to um, continue to provide transparent services to the constituents of this community. To begin, earlier on in this fiscal year, we launched Granicus, which is our electric agenda management software. All of the directors, including the co clerk's office collaborates together to implement and put out an agenda package to you, including the community. Uh, we recently launched the electronic cloud-based election management system known as Easy Vote. That will be used for the upcoming election, meaning that when someone comes to file to run for candidacy in the clerk's office, they will be using Easy Vote to report all of their campaign filings, which is connected with our village website. And as Eric and Desmond mentioned earlier, we just um, re launched Just FOIA. We haven't inaugurated it yet to the public. We're currently working on um, setting up training, which all department directors and staff will be trained on how to use Just FOIA so that we can properly expedite public records requests, as Eric mentioned in um, the previous presentation. To continue on with some of the accomplishments, we launched a passport kiosk for the general public. If you haven't seen it, it's across the passport facility. It's in the media room. It's just a small area where there's a computer where if a resident wants to print, their application or type in application, they can have access to do that in our kiosk. Um, we have a lot of Gen Zs who don't like filling out an application by hand <laughs> or don't know how, so the, the computer is very helpful and I would just want to give you peace of mind. That computer only has access to the internet and um, the US Department of State's website, okay? Um, continuing, we created an education, I'm sorry, we created an advisory and committee member guidebook. That guidebook was reviewed and approved by our legal attorney, a legal counsel. So moving forward, when there's a new member that comes on board to one of our boards or committees, they will receive a guidebook that outlines uh, the public records law, the Sunshine Law. It also has in that guidebook um, information about our code and just tips on how to follow Robert's rules of order and how to properly take meeting minutes. So it's information all in one place. As well, um, continuing with the accomplishments, the clerk administered and supervised the November 2022 general election during this fiscal year. We advertised 87 public notices for all of our public meetings, community workshops, and bid openings, processed over 275 public records requests to date, enacted legislation, 60 resolutions, and 15 ordinances. Now, goals for the upcoming fiscal year. I also tried my best to align those new goals with the visioning and strategic goals that were adopted by the Village Council. For example, under goal A, which is accessible, efficient, and transparent government, 
energized by engaged and informed residents, the clerk's office will aim to accomplish the following. Create new council member orientation packages. That's following the same example that I just explained to you of um, the orientation package that was created for an advisory board or committee member. So that way when a new council member um, is elected into office, they have information all in one place. Develop educational video tutorials for the public on how to look for information, how to access information. Maintain an accounting of village documents electronically. And as um, I heard some of you say earlier, I would also um, aim to implement online registrations for lobbyists and golf carts. Lobbyists and golf cart registrations do fall under the department of the village clerk. Codify the code of, the code of ordinances on a quarterly basis versus semi-annually. Right now in the clerk's budget, I have the budget to codify our code with our vendor muni code twice a year. Therefore, moving forward with your blessing, if um, I'm able to, in the budget, I would like to codify the code once every quarter. And last but not least, assist with kicking off the second annual Citizens Academy. It was an academy that was very well received by the members of, of the community. And under goal B, maintain financial stability and sustainability as we accomplish new goals. The clerk's office will aim to accomplish increasing the number of passport applications, modify the existing passport portal fee to be in line with other agencies throughout the community, and launch the service of issuing money orders to the public. I hope that the goals that I explained to you in, in my earlier slide give you a reasoning of the funding request that I've made for the Department of the Village Clerk. The funding requests you see are pretty much in line with the um, existing funds in the clerk's office with the exception of two categories. As I mentioned, I would like to increase the line item for ordinance codifications so that we can codify muni code four times a year versus two times a year. And the other change you will see is the request for a records management consultant in order to accomplish the goal of acquiring a current inventory of all village ride records electronically. So having everything electronically would be extremely beneficial, not only to the staff, but as well to the constituents of the community. Under best practices, that leads me to report that the office of the village clerk is an extremely active member of the Miami-Dade Municipal Clerks Association, the Florida Association of City Clerks, the International Institute of Municipal Clerks, and the Miami-Dade County League of Cities to ensure that our division is a great representation for the village. Best practices are important because they help agencies develop highly effective processes to streamline our work. Now, before I conclude my presentation, I thought it would be a great opportunity for, for you and the public to get to know us better. So and make it interesting and make it fun, right? So here are some extremely fun facts about the clerk's division. We work, but we like to have fun too. <laughs> um, the, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the clerk's office is comprised of three members. That's Melissa, Idami, and I. Now, when you add up the years of service combined all together, you would consider us 37. Greece, Japan, and France are among our top favorite travel destinations. It's pretty cool when you meet different families who are coming in for a passport and you hear all about their travel plans. So that, that is pretty awesome. You not only get to hear about their past travel experiences, but you it's fun to hear where they're planning on going to next around the world. Our biggest sense of accomplishment as a team in our professional and in our line of work is when a resident or even a colleague walks out of our office with a big smile on their face, especially if they walk out with the information that they're looking for at that moment. Staff rely on us 
on information so that they can work on agendas, work on memos, on reports, so that we can all, we, you know, work all collaborative to get you guys an agenda. So that's a huge sense of accomplishment when, when someone comes in and walks out with exactly what they were looking for. Melissa, you all know Melissa, is known to make the best broccoli salad in the building. The staff loves it. And she began her tenure with the village at the front desk when she moved from Pennsylvania to Palmetto Bay more than 15 years ago. Idami loves to bake, and the office favorite is her blueberry cornbread. And prior to Palmetto Bay, she worked for cruise lines. I am not a person without coffee. I can have coffee up to three times a day. So, yeah. <laughs> We enjoy Loki's visits to our office, especially in the afternoon. For those that don't know, Loki is our village mascot, our village attorney's dog. He's therapeutic, and he brings us a big sense of joy when he hangs out with us. Pisa is our favorite lunch treat when we aren't counting the calories. We like meeting the newest faces of the village. We're very privileged that we get to meet the youngest members of this community. Here's an example. We have members of this community that are as seven to 12 days old that come to visit our passport facility that need a passport picture and need, an, uh, and need a, 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 um, a passport. So that's, that's pretty cool. And uh, we've met several star athletes over the year, including elected officials from many other agencies. We get many compliments from the Miami downtown passport headquarters regarding our passport boutique service. And last but not least, you'll see my daughter up there in that slide. She loves to wear Palmetto Bay blue, <laughs> especially the Palmetto Bay uh, parks and recreation cap. She doesn't like to take it off. As we reach the end of my presentation, I, I'm hopeful that if you we're here, if you were listening, that you have a better understanding of what the clerk, uh, the department of the clerk does for you, the elected officials, and how we're, we spent your tax dollars and how we aim to improve the services in our department. We have our third and final budget workshop scheduled for next month, Wednesday, July 26, 2023 at 7 p.m. Again, thank you for listening, and a big shout out to my colleagues who are here. I view each department as a little piece to a big puzzle because we truly rely on each other for information to get things done in this village. So thank you. <laughs>